so hi, um, Heather and Corey. Thanks for having me. It's Karen Carroll, Public Health Director for the City of Gloucester. Um, and I'm just here to give you an update. I haven't been here for a little bit. So I'll give you a little update and we can talk about what's happening in the vaccine world um, right now. So people are up to speed. So currently in Gloucester, we have 70 active cases. We have only two in the hospital, which is very low for us. Um, and unfortunately, we've had 39 deaths to date. So there have been a couple of new deaths since the new year. Um, the positivity rate is 2.2% as of last week here in, in Gloucester, and that's roughly around what the state's average was as well. So that's uh, significantly lower than it has been in a long time, very encouraging. Also, our wastewater virus levels are very low um, and significantly lower than they have been for several months. So all good signs along with our long-term care facilities are doing really well with very few cases, if at all. Um, same thing with the schools. Our contact tracing team is intact, doing a nice job and keeping up um, as is our vaccine team. So that's the kind of good news. The couple of things that we're watching really closely is that in the last few days, we have started to see some numbers climb. Uh, locally, and that could just be this time of year. It could be to do with Super Bowl or traveling over the school vacation. So these are things that we know are spreaders of the virus and we'll be keeping a close eye on. Um, the other thing that is here in Massachusetts that is very concerning is these newer strains of COVID-19. Um, there is the UK strain. Um, so we have seen the UK strain here in Massachusetts, uh, mainly in Central Mass. There are about 44 case, known cases and two of the South African strain. Now these are much more contagious. They move really quickly through and create clusters and expand quickly through um, groups of people. So, you know, I think the caution is we know about some of them, um, but we only are seeing the tip of the iceberg because we're only testing certain people for this strain if there is suspicion. So not every COVID test that gets done in the state is automatically screened for these new strains. Hmm. Um, the fact that we're seeing cases come up who have not traveled tells us that the virus is here within communities in Massachusetts. Um, again, something that we're watching really closely, we've been told that the vaccines will provide some immunity to people with these strains as well. Uh, but again, they're so new and for how long and how much, we don't know. Um, so those are kind of the, you know, the, the, the other updates. Yeah. Um, Karen, did so you want to talk about the, the governor's plan for vaccination now? Yeah, good. Thanks, Corey. Um, so the governor changed, the governor's office has kind of changed tack last week to pushing more of the vaccines to the mass vaccination sites throughout the state. Um, and the reason being is they're really efficient at it. You know, they can quickly move a lot of people through. And when you're dealing with a pandemic with new strains coming, that's what we need to do is get as many people vaccinated as possible. Um, so unfortunately though, that leaves a gap for people who cannot travel, who do not want to travel, who might have other barriers like missing time off from work. Um, or lack of internet access. So there's a lot of barriers for people and we need to figure out ways to help people access the vaccine, whether they're doing it locally or whether they're going down to Danvers or Foxborough. So our team has spent the past week really shifting gears as well to say, you know, we're going to be doing less of our own vaccination clinics um, for now, that's the state's decision, um, but, we still have the same mission to vaccinate 100% of our population that wants to be. So our mission and our objective hasn't changed, just how we're gonna do the work has changed um, again. And we've gotten really good at changing on a dime through this past year. So the team is rejigging re and thinking, how can we move forward to um, partner with people who might have the vaccine? So family health centers or pharmacists, um, and how can we partner with these larger sites to and our senior agencies predominantly to get people access to the vaccine at the sites? 
Um, so those are the big challenges that lie in front of us, but um, Gloucester is an amazing place and the team will regroup with the support of the mayor and the administration and all our partner agencies are already starting to think about how we can do this. Um, I think there'll also be a lot of smaller programs that will keep cropping up. We heard last week about a program for homebound seniors. Um, the state's gonna be rolling that out very soon. They're talking about it, it's in the planning stages. And it sounds like towns will be given the option to either run it ourselves or have the state run it. So I imagine that's the kind of thing our local public health uh, department would do in conjunction with our local agencies who know this population. Um, and I think those sort of programs will continue to come up along with it. senior, uh, the low income senior housing project is also a program vaccination program through the state. Um, and we're actually beginning that next week. So we have permission to proceed. We've been planning that for a while. So um, we're still busy, you know, we're doing our second dose clinics and then all of these newer sort of smaller, very targeted programs. Um, and we're continuing to advocate to the state to, to continue to use local public health to reach these smaller um, groups of people who may not have as easy access to the mass vaccination sites. Gotcha. In this planning for this sort of new phase, I think communication is going to be even more important. We need to help people understand what their choices are, uh, what the information is, the risks around getting the vaccine versus not getting the vaccine versus going to a mass site. Um, so there's an awful lot of need for communication. And you know, anytime you have a public health situation where you're trying to introduce some kind of um, mitigating factor or medication or program or talking to people about exercising for health, anything you're introducing, there's a lot of science be behind how people hear it, how many times you have to say it, who has to say it to make people feel comfortable that this is accurate information that will really help them. But I think the main site for new information around who's eligible, when they're eligible, and what sites are available is the, the mass.gov vaccine finder. Um, and they have actually launched a new program and I can give you the website. It's um, vaxfinder.mass.gov. And that will actually like find a vaccine in closest to you. So that's that kind of new software that sorts through where you live and where there might actually be a vaccine in real time. Um, the 211 number, though, is great. That's for seniors and anyone who needs assistance booking in for an appointment. They will walk you through the online registration and help you find a site and an appointment in the future. Um, and that can be really helpful too. I know it was very busy at the end of last week when the when the criteria were extended. There were you know a million more people who were then eligible all of a sudden. So of course that was a lot of pressure on the systems. But hopefully by now there's uh, plenty of people that will take those calls and help people get um, to get registered into a, a site. Um, again, what it, it won't do is help organize things like transportation. Um, that has to be more of a local solution. And I guess for our people in Gloucester, um, that's where we'll do a lot of local communication when we get to that point, if we have a program or um, we'll do a lot of outreach to let people know about it. Um, the mayor also is very good about using the robocall to all residents, because again, not everybody's on Facebook or email or that sort of thing. So we wanna make sure that we cover off on everybody um, and that's where the robocall is really handy in reaching other populations. Um, but I can say, you know, we've been partnering, our agencies in Gloucester are incredible. They know their clients, they know where they are, they keep up to date with them, they know how to contact them. Um, and that can be anything from one stop to Action Homeless Shelter, Grace Center, um, Senior Care, their Meals on Wheels they're all um, keeping really up-to-date accurate lists. So we, we can work with them when, when opportunities come up quickly, we can say, okay, here you go. And they mobilize within their own agencies. Gotcha. Okay, Karen, we'll leave you to get back to work now. We thank, thank you, you for the update and we will Anytime. chat soon. Okay, be well. Thank you. You too.